like now as a pastor, what are some of the struggles you have faced or facing right now? So I, I started pastoring at, at 27, um, which is that's young. a young age. Yeah, that's, your, oh. that's a young age. Um, yeah. I know in this day and time, a, a lot of people wouldn't think so, you know, especially with the um, rise, if you want to call it that, of, of, of so many young pastors and yeah. preachers. Um, people will look at 27 and, and think that's kind of a normal thing. It's really not right. uh, to, to pastor at 27. Um so got called a pastor at 27, and the dynamic was certainly a different one, um, a challenging one, coming into a very historic church, um, a church where the pastor is pretty much synonymous yeah. uh, with, with the history of the church, and um, a legendary individual in his own right. Um and so coming into that type of context at, at, at 27, where well, your predecessor has been there for 43 years and there's, you know, just this entire system of, of church life and ministry life that you're walking into, mm -hmm. um, it presents a lot of challenges. Um, you know, you, you, you've been called to lead people where, you know, literally, and I, I know we kind of hear it sometimes as a cliche, but literally, you're called to lead people who are old enough to be your mother and your father and your, right. your grandparents. And, you know, they have been used to one figure and one face and one voice and one visionary being in front of them for 43 years. And then now all of a sudden God sends this 27 year old um, who doesn't have, you know, any pastoral experience at the senior pastor level. I've been a youth pastor before. Mm -hmm. And, um, now all of a sudden, you know, you're supposed to submit yourself to the, the pastoral leadership of this this young 27-year-old. So coming into that type of um, system and into that type of dynamic certainly has some challenges. Um, it was a big adjustment period uh, in terms of me learning the ends and what it really means to pastor. Um, and understanding that when you're coming in as a new pastor, you know, as, as um, my pastor would always tell me, you're not called to be the pastor, you're called to become the pastor. Mm -hmm. uh, which means that that's, that's not something that you, that you were given right away. Yeah, you got the title, right. but you don't really, um, you don't really have the influence. So the early years, or the earlier years of pastoring, I would say, was me trying to figure out how, it just means that at the core, I'm going to be, I'm going to be Jakari Davis. You know, I wasn't born, I wasn't born Pastor Jakari Davis. I wasn't right. born Reverend Jakari, I was born Jakari Davis. And I think that a lot of guys, you know, we're seeing so many pastors and preachers quit ministry or we're seeing them, you know, unfortunately take their lives. Yeah. And I think it's because a lot of guys, man, they're living in a, kind of living in a cage where they feel they got to, it's almost like a performance, yeah. man. They got to put on a mask. Yeah. They got to be somebody different every day. Right. I'm like, man, that takes too much energy, man. Yeah, it, does, it takes a lot of energy. And I'm like, I'm just going to be me. Now, that doesn't. It doesn't negate the, the gift that God has given me. Right. It doesn't negate the calling. But God uses that mm -hmm. to make a difference in the life of other people. Right. So uh, that was impactful for me. You know, yeah. don't don't let anybody be your authentic self. Don't let anybody take away your originality. Right. Um, a lot of people don't know. Prime example that I moved. Before I got called to Bella Vista, I got called to another church in Ohio. And... Um, I was getting ready to accept that call until, you know, I, I called uh, Pastor Mackey to, to tell him, and man, he asked me a question, and it changed the whole trajectory. He said, uh, I'm, I'm happy um, about your call, but he said, but let me just ask you a question before you accept it, because I want you to be sure. If you go to this church, can you be yourself? 
Can you be Jakari Davids if you go to this church? And I could not honestly answer <laughs> and say yes yeah. because of the type of personality that, that the church had. Mm -hmm. I knew that there were some things about me that I was going to have to adjust to change. Mm -hmm. And so I had to call and turn them down. And um, that was hard to do. But I think ultimately it was the right thing to do. And I, and I, I knew what he was I knew what he was trying to push me towards. Mm -hmm. Don't go somewhere where you're going to have to live in a cage right. because you're going to, you can do ministry, but you're going to be miserable while you're doing right. it. And that's what you don't want to happen. Mm -hmm. That's what you don't want to happen. Um, so I would say those are, are two things that, that stick with me. Um, then finally, my grandfather. 